one of the last times I was there, I watched my, my buddy and I watched a cockroach crawl across the bar. Yeah. To where they keep the straws mm -hmm. and go, jump in, go up and then jump and disappear into the straws. And I was just like, oh, my God, do not order the mixed <laughs> drinks, folks. <laughs> I'm Arizona Family Political Editor Dennis Welch. Dennis, fake news Welch, try to tell the truth. And this is the Politics Unplugged Podcast. Dennis, if you have a problem with substance abuse, I am more than willing to talk to you anytime you need. All right, well, welcome back to the podcast uh, here with, uh, you know, I'm, and Colin, our producer, um, I'm just wanted to let you know that I am remembering to introduce our guest. I'm this proud week. of you. I'm oh, proud there of you. you. Go. It's been a problem for the, <laughs> <laughs> that was okay. the best, like two out of the last three weeks. So yeah. I'm still getting the hang of this whole thing. But we've got Congressman Ruben Gallego here on uh, the pod this week. He's running for the U.S. Senate. I um, want to thank you very much for being here. Of course. And so I, I, I do want to start uh, with, with, with kind of the basic question, you know, uh, why the hell are you running for the Senate? I, you, you are in one of the safest districts, mm -hmm. not only in the state, but like in the entire freaking country. <laughs> if you, if you, you know, and you've got the seat and, and, and the, the idea is whoever wins your replacement race is going to have that, rate, that, right. that seat for as, basically as long as they want. Why not just stay there? Become maybe maybe you know get a you know try to get a, a leadership position mm -hmm. in the house and then you can wait and they can yeah. name the youth centers after yeah. you and the post offices <laughs> well, no, after no, no, you. Why not a, do that? Yeah. Well, look, and I've been very like I've already had leadership positions. You know, I've been the chairman of Intel Special Operations. I've been the vice chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. I've been the chairman of the uh, subcommittee on Native American Affairs. So there's just a lot of things I've already done. Um, but I went to Congress and I've been involved uh, in politics to make a difference, not to have a, a title. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, when we see certain things happening in the Senate that should be moving uh, and I realize that it's not going to change because of the person there, then I had to make a decision. Either I'm going to, you know, go there and make the change possible or I should just actually just step away because I'm not in this just so I could keep collecting a government check. That's mm -hmm. ridiculous. I think people need, uh, you know, Arizona's need someone that is fighting for them, that thinks about them first and foremost, and is accountable to them. Yeah, but, you know, it goes against, you know, so it's a really good political answer, you know, but it goes against, there's a lot of politicians. I know the last thing they want, they're risk adverse. Uh -huh. And we know post politicians don't want to take that step. But, like, what has prompted you to take this? Because this, this is risking your political career here. If this doesn't I'm, pan out for well, you. Well, I mean, like, Dennis, like, I, if, I, if I had to, if I limited myself because of risk, I would never have bit, amounted to anything in this world. Like, I wasn't handed you know, anything in life. You know, mm -hmm. I worked my way through college, got myself, uh, you know, scholarships. Uh, you know, joined the Marine Corps, ended up being seen with the hardest combat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I, uh, you know, after war, I moved here to Arizona and started from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I took a lot of very uh, risky steps, but you do it because you believe that you can help people. And mm -hmm. that's why I got into uh, politics, into government, because I want to be able to help people, people like me who needed help growing up, or my parents, who, mm -hmm. my moms particularly, who were, you know, trying to raise kids and trying to, you know, live the American dream. And right now, there's, in my opinion, someone that's not doing that. Mm -hmm. And that person, that is not doing that. I mean, you're obviously referring to Arizona's independence, now mm -hmm. independent Senator Kirsten Sinema. What's the issue that you have with her? I'll let you go and then I'll press you on some more questions sure. and, and follow up with that. Well, look, I think at the end of the day, you know, some of the things that I've seen uh, that a lot of us were hoping is that we'd have someone that'd be fighting for us. And, uh, you know, there's been disappointments. You know, she, instead of fighting to bring the cost of prescription drugs down, she was negotiating for pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. Instead of fighting for a higher minimum wage, she fought to make sure the hedge fund managers had their, their carve out and their tax mm -hmm. policies. And then just lastly, it's an issue of accountability. Um, she doesn't answer to constituents. She doesn't have town halls. We hardly see her. It's very hard even for, you know, our journalists to even talk to her. Uh, I think at the end of the day, no matter what position you have in politics, you have to be accountable. You have to be able to uh, talk to your constituents, and maybe you don't have, you, maybe you're not going to agree 100 percent of the time, but make sure that you're open uh, to, you know, listening to them at least. And I think what has happened in the last couple of years, and which is why uh, we're seeing her numbers where they are, is because she has not done that, and people don't believe that she holds the same values that they have. So, what's what what does Senator Gallego deliver that Cinema is not? 
Because, I mean, you, you look, you see the reports. I've got some of them right here, you know. I mean, cinema was instrumental in Build Back Better and the infrastructure the infrastructure bill. Mm -hmm. um, she was instrumental in cr the, the monument that was just created by, by, by Biden recently up by the Grand Canyon that took uranium mining off the table and is opening up that area to hunting, fishing, hiking, all of that. What, what are you going to do that's different? Because all, all of that is seems to be very important stuff of course that Kirsten yeah. Cinema is getting done. Right. Of course it is. But it's also important that you have someone that's not going to negotiate for pharmaceutical companies. It's also mm -hmm. important that someone that's going to remember working class people and the fact that they need a minimum wage increase. Uh, I think it's important that you're there uh, really pushing and fighting to defend the Voting Rights Act, something that, uh, you know, she says she was going to do. And then when she got to the Senate, totally forgot it. Uh, so... There's a lot of things uh, that she has done well, but there's a lot of things that, you know, I think uh, Arizonans are demanding more and they don't uh, have they don't believe that she's really holding the Arizona values that they center there with. Well, and there's also an argument to push back is that she is, you know, representing a state that is still got a Republican advantage in voter in, in voters. I mean, independents are the largest sure. block of voters. Don't get me started about in, independence. I mean, we could talk a whole show yeah. about, about about that. But it's also that. But this, the idea is that she is representing a a swing state, and you know you're going to have to win some of those independents and oh, maybe absolutely. maybe some of those Republicans to do that. Mm -hmm. And and some of what she has done is you know it, it does appeal to that. You see a lot of Republicans that do talk about her. So I'm just again like, you know you know what, what, let's talk about the build back better. What would if Ruben was in that if Senator Gallego was in that position. What would you have been negotiating for? How would that bill have looked different? Because, you know, bottom line is because of Arizona's swing statiness, yeah. um, it seems like it's a really – it could be a powerful seat in the Senate. It is a powerful seat in the Senate, and it will be. And, and most importantly, it's a powerful seat for people that need help. Mm -hmm. uh, what Build Back Better would have looked like for me would have been a stronger uh, child tax credit mm -hmm. to help all these families right now that are struggling just to make ends meet. Build Back Better also had a lot of provisions that would have helped with housing. Arizona right now is going through a, a severe housing crisis. Mm -hmm. The average home in Arizona is $500,000. The average Arizona family is making around $61,000. So even on paper, the average Arizona family does not qualify for the average home. There's no solutions coming out of Washington, D.C. right now because of that. And there was a lot of that in the Build Back Better agenda that Senator Sinema cut. Mm -hmm. uh, we could have had a lot more uh, drugs that we could have uh, made cheaper for our seniors, and she negotiated again for um, the pharmaceutical companies. So mm -hmm. there's a lot that was uh, done well, but there's a lot that could have been done better. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, again, you need to be answerable to um, Arizonans. And the whole time, uh, you know, not you know, senators, not just her, but senators were, were talking about the better, and she was negotiating for some entity. She never was responsive to the people here in Arizona. It's not just me saying that. These are organizations that were very supportive of her in the past that you know just weren't able to talk to her. You know, you know, you brought up housing, and I, 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 you know, I don't want to get too far off on a tangent, but it is, I think, one of the top most important issues. Absolutely, um, it's a big deal. We've seen Phoenix change radically. Three, over the three past, years, yeah, yeah almost yeah. double the house price. Yeah. I mean, this used to be the place where you, did, you it was easy to get by. Absolutely, you know, yeah. Um, and not that long ago, you know, you could buy a really decent house here for a whole lot less. Uh -huh. You could get by here. That has all radically changed. It's not just here; it's across the country as well. I mean, what what's the solution here? What needs to happen? We need to build and build fast. Uh -huh. And I think we also need to make sure that we bring uh, different types of uh, uh, mortgage assistance so people can actually buy a house. Right now we have a supply problem, but then also we have high interest rates. Mm -hmm. So 7%? 7%, highest it's been in a while. Yeah. But you know we should be figuring out, number one, how to bring down um, the cost of a mortgage. Uh, an FHA loan right now is about 3.5% down payment. I'm gonna get really nerdy with you. Mm -hmm. But 3.5% for your first home, which is averaging about $500,000, is, is a lot of down payment that people don't have. So let's give people mortgage assistance mm -hmm. for them to get their first uh, mortgage. Yeah, because at the same time, rent's going up, so it makes Correct. it harder for you to save for the down payment Correct. to go down. It's like this downward spiral uh, there. You know, I'm, I'm talking about looking more at like, you know, some of these, you know, organizations, these these corporations that are buying up the housing stock, sure. um, you know, that can buy up hundreds, thousands of houses out there. 
or you know, so the 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 the, the short term rental market. Yeah, you know, I think there's something to be said about uh, making sure that there's no uh, monopolistic control over our our properties. And I think mm -hmm. you're gonna. And we, I certainly have talked about that. Also talked about that when it comes to farmland. Uh, but you know, DC uh, DC has a Wall Street problem. Mm -hmm. The hedge funds and the uh, investment bankers have a lot of power there. Uh, but we should make sure that we're breaking their ability to basically affect people's lives when it comes to housing, because housing matters. It, may, it makes a big difference whether you're gonna have a stable house and a stable family if you know that where your housing is in year to year. People retire from, you know, use their, their house as a retirement vehicle. Um, wealth is essentially passed on, and the fact that so many Arizonans can't even afford their first house uh, is a problem. I mean, there's other things we should be doing. Number one, we should uh, get back to the idea of the starter home. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of people are, are a lot of things that's being constructed right now are big houses. A lot of people just need that first starter home that is probably gonna cost $250,000 so they could actually build on that. We also need to look at apartments and making sure that we're subsidizing uh, affordable apartments, not just for low income people, mm -hmm. but for market rate. Because right now, people, I, people that makes, a family that makes about $70,000, they don't feel comfortable. But they how, feel. how does the federal government do something on, on apartments? That's that's a city issue. That's a zoning issue. You sure, know? We, zoning. we see that in Phoenix all the time, right. where these luxury apartments actually get giblets and tax breaks to go build these apartments that the average person can't afford. It's, no, we it's, do it's have, absurd. Yeah, but we actually do have what's called the low-income in, low housing tax credit. Mm -hmm. Uh, we actually need to change it to actually make it more viable for people to put it up because right now it's not, it doesn't incentivize actually you building apartments. Uh, that is something the federal government can be doing right away. We should also be converting all these empty commercial buildings and converting them into housing. That's very expensive, mm -hmm. uh, but we should, as a federal government, try to incentivize that because that's another way to put more housing supply out there. Okay. I um, want to get back on topic. We were talking about uh, uh, Kirsten Cinema a little bit. We saw this week um, Kirsten Cinema, you know, uh, it said recently to a business group, I believe it was at the Phoenix Chamber at this yeah. lunch, and she was addressing something that has really stymied the Senate now for several months. Um, former foot college football coach, uh, Senator from Alabama, Tommy Tuberville, mm -hmm. is holding up hundreds of military, key military Correct. appointments. I know this is something that's really near and dear to you, being sure. a, being a, a former Marine. I know Marines uh, are no, always no Marines. So and stop I, me. I've also been on the Armed Services Committee for 10 years. And yeah, so I've yeah, actually yes. dealt and worked on this issue. I've created, you know, I've been part of the last 10 years military budget. So this is something that I am particularly have very good knowledge on and been working on for years. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Kirsten Sinema has said she's willing to help broker some sort of solution to this because Tommy Tuberville is refusing to move forward with appointments because as a senator, he has that power to mm -hmm. do so. He can block it single-handedly from moving forward. It's over 250 appointments now. I believe the Marines, uh, the Navy, Navy, the Army do not yeah. have confirmed leaders Correct. at this point. Kirsten Sinema says she can. she's willing to help broker a deal, find middle ground on this. I mean, first of all, let me get your reaction to her um, saying that she can find some middle ground in this. Well, look, I think sometimes it's important for us to find middle ground and mm -hmm. it's, you know, compromise is nothing we should be afraid of. It's not a, a dirty word. But sometimes we have to stick to our values. And what we know is Arizonans are pro-choice. We also know that women that serve in the military should have a right to an abortion. And whether or not you uh, get to use or to use that right should not be determined by what base you get put on. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially what Tommy Tarbell is trying to say. Uh, and so when someone like Kirsten is saying like there's a compromise there, there is no compromise. When you join the military, um, there's certain rights you give up. Par control over your body should not be one of them when it comes to abortion and abortion issues. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, what, whatever Kirsten was trying to get at, um, I, I, it definitely is, is not flying when it comes to our veterans, when it comes to our military personnel. Mm -hmm. uh, at the, the best that uh, can happen right now is for Tommy Turbo to lift his uh, abuse, by the way, of a system. Mm -hmm. uh, what he's doing is, is unprecedented in the history of the Senate. It's supposed to be used to stop problematic generals, which you can do and have, have done in the past or other officers. And, but the fact that you're putting the whole uh, promotion system on hold uh, is not a good use because you, if you want to do that and you want to change policy, you work it through the defense budget. You don't take hostage women's lives. Yeah. Well, I, I believe Simna was also saying that she supports – you know, uh, or support, you know, doesn't support Tuberville's position on abortion, but she, you know, supports the tool he's using to do this. You yeah. know, I mean, you know, we, we've, we've, we've heard a similar argument with her on the filibuster, uh -huh. you know, procedure and, or, you know, uh, you know, the, uh, in the Senate that she wants to protect. 
do you think they th- things like the filibuster, like this this single handed block with the Senate, right. th- 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 do they need to remain, or would you be f- in favor of trying no, to I, get rid of these? I think we need to start looking at reforming them because they're clearly being used as a tool of obstruction. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm glad she likes the process, but that process is holding up, you know, potentially thousands of uh, women from uh, being able to access safe abortion. Right. Mm-hmm. It's a, been abused as a system that, uh, you know, Tommy is using that has never been done in the way that he's doing it. Again, it's largely been done in the past to stop problematic generals and, and officers. Uh, and now he's doing it because he doesn't like the policy of the military. Well, if you don't like the policy of the military, then vote on it uh, with, through the defense budget up or down. The problem is he can't win the vote, so therefore he's just going to hold everybody hostage. And when you have other senators that say, I en- encourage and support your hostage taking at the detriment of women, uh, I think then that points to a, a problem, uh, mm-hmm. and our, Ameri- our American military women deserve a right uh, to control uh, their body, and uh, they have a right to, to an abortion if they need it. All right. Um, I also, uh, other things I want to talk to you about too. Uh, this past week, we saw Governor Katie Hobbs. She declared the extreme heat here mm-hmm. an emergency. You've got a bill that you sponsored. You've talked a lot about this about trying to get FEMA to recognize yep. heat. Um, as an emergency. Now, this would free up money correct, for communities to deal with, with the heat. Talk, talk to me a little bit about that. I mean, you know, you know, I'm not going to ask you about the, the governor's declaration or anything uh-huh. like that because she's been maybe criticized that maybe it's a little too little too late because mm-hmm. that happened after this r- ridiculous 31 yeah. straight days of yeah. 110 degree temperatures. Um, but talk to us about where that bill is. Uh, what do you, are you hopeful anything can be accomplished with that? I, I think, yes, number one, it's a good bipartisan bill with uh, Democrats and Republicans um, because this is an issue that is nationwide and it doesn't, it crosses party lines. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, Republicans in, uh, you know, Nevada that are for this bill because they're, they're hurting. We have Republicans in like Oregon, Washington that understand that they're also having a heat crisis. Uh, and it's a common sense bill. If you think about it, if you live in the Northeast, and you have massive amount of snow, if your local communities cannot deal with it, they can uh, request a disaster declaration from FEMA and they could draw down funds to pay for that. Okay. If you're in the Midwest, too much rain, same thing. You could draw down funds from the federal government. In Arizona, you know, parts of Arizona, we have a ve- we're have we very you know lucky, but we can have extreme heat and that's costing money to the taxpayer. How does that look like? Well, when we have extreme heat, city of Phoenix, county, other cities, localities, they start opening up cooling centers and they because they want to keep people alive or mm-hmm. watering stations everything else like that that type of um, uh, burden starts t- t- wearing and tearing wearing on taxpayers because mm-hmm. these cities have to find the funds to do that uh if they if if fema allowed it to be called a disaster we could actually tap the federal tax dollars that we pay to bring down to help us for these very extreme situations now it's not going to be every summer that you do this mm-hmm. uh we allow fema to actually kind of set the standards and guidelines to make sure that it's not something that's abused, but it's certainly a tool that we need and we needed it certainly uh, this, uh, you know, this summer. Mm-hmm. And this is why I pushed hard on the president uh, to do it. I've been pushing hard on FEMA to do it. Uh, and we're going to continue doing it because this problem is not was, going away. I was going to bring that, bring that up because you, you've been critical of the president saying that he's not doing enough yes. on this. What do you want to see from the president on this? Look, I think the president can take executive action on this and order FEMA to look at uh, and treat uh, extreme heat as one of the covered disasters uh, that states, localities uh, can request uh, assistance with. And uh, as much as, you know, I don't necessarily like going through the executive uh, for, for action, it's much quicker. And again, there are people that are hurting, are hurting right now, mm-hmm. uh, communities that are hurting right now and need that support. And the president and his, uh, you know, and people in his office should really understand that. All right, and uh, uh, the other big story of the week, I want to get your take on uh, the latest indictment from former President Donald Trump, yeah. um, you know, this time in Georgia. Um, we saw former Governor Doug Ducey here kind of uh, raise some concerns recently about the process of of the of, of all of this. I want to get your take oh. on this because, you know, I, I, I personally – Politically, think that you know this isn't going to this is not going to hurt him politically. I think no. he he walks away with the nomination at this point. But I I, I do want to get your take on this. Well, I think number one, the most important focus is not politics; it's the rule of law. Yeah. Um, there's a process that got started. Uh, they have gone through the grand jury process. Uh, there's four different courts and probably more, and uh, we certainly should not inter- be interfering with that process. Now, uh, everyone has a right. 
to due process and has a right to defense. And I think the president's going to be able to do have that. Uh, and at this point, we should let the process carry itself out uh, and keep the politics separate from the process. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, um, I guess moving forward, um, you know, uh, with your, you know, getting ready to, 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 to take on, on cinema again, I just want to kind of circle back again and just get a more succinct answer. If I, if I could, it's just, what's the difference between you and cinema, if what's going to look like, mm -hmm. you know, should you win this seat in, in, in next year's election? Look, I think the, the difference is I'm more likely to meet with everyday Arizonans than the bank lobby and the investment bankers at cinema mm -hmm. is. I'm here to fight for people that need uh, someone to actually care about them, to fight for them, actually thinks about how to bring down the cost of living, how to make it easier for you to you know, find a place to send your kid that has affordable uh, child care, um, about you know, thinking about the, the importance of reducing childhood poverty through like the child tax credit. You know, someone that actually understands like, you know what, it's hard out there because I lived largely a hard life. I remember how hard it was to pay bills uh, and how stressful it is and how much I worked hard and other, others, other, other, other of us worked hard to live in and fight for the American dream. But right now, there's a lot of people don't feel that way. A lot of people don't really believe in the American dream anymore. They believe that they're just trying to survive. So I want to be that person in the Senate that actually is going to be for that unspoken population of this country that wants someone to fight for them every day and think about them every day and not just when it comes to election season. All right. Going to have to end it there. Um, thank Thanks. you very much, uh, Congressman Ruben Gallego. Thanks thank you, thank you. On. And looking forward to having you come back on the show many, many, many times, right? I, I, I will not <laughs> run away from you, I promise. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Gracias. Welcome back to the the welcome back to the pod. <laughs> I can't speak today uh, for some reason. I don't know if it's any different than any other day, but we're here with uh, producer Colin. Hi. Colin, how you how you holding up? You just moved a kid into the dorms over at the I, I did at yeah. the soon to be former Pac-12 school of the yes, Arizona, the Arizona State, State University. University. Yeah, um, they have it down to a, a they have it down to an art. They do a great job of moving you in mm -hmm. and making it as painless as possible the first time through. Mm -hmm. And then if you say go to Target and buy a refrigerator and a microwave and a couple lamps and go back. You can't go through that line again. You have to go to the uh, the parking garage and then carry the refrigerator across campus yeah, to the yeah, dorm. Yeah. Remember the Seinfeld where uh, Kramer has the air conditioner <laughs> walking through the parking garage? That was that was me last Saturday <laughs> with the with the refrigerator. How you but, holding up though? You, know, you and I okay. we're not we're not as they say spring chickens. No. Early summer chickens, maybe. Yeah, you early know? summer chickens. Yeah, sure. There you go. Yeah. Sure, sure. Doing okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Yes. Well, well, let's 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 talk about it. We just had Ruben on. I uh, want to get your take on on the interview he gave. I think one of the things you know I'm I'm interested in is is how does he separate himself? What's different from from Ruben uh, versus you know Senator Cinema? You know, and you know you, you can talk about like, well, I'm going to be more in touch with the people. I'm going to do this and that. A lot of that is like typical kind of kind of rhetoric you hear on the campaign. But, we, you know, we tried to I tried to get a little bit more detail on how would this bill look a little bit different? I don't know. What, what's your take, Ryan? Well, yeah. And he seemed to be kind of uh, careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> His answer. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I kind of expected him to light into cinema a little more than he did. Yeah. But um, he gave a, a more diplomatic answer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think there's certainly a section of the Democratic Party that thinks she's veered away from why they yeah. supported her in the first place. Yeah. And that's that's the void he can fill. Well, I, 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 and I, I, I was on the front line of that. I heard a lot of that this week. I did some reporting on um, Kirsten Sinema's comments regarding the, you know, military promotions in the in the Senate, the standoff there over the military's abortion policy. And I was, you know, talking to some, you know, few, some women veterans uh, about this and uh, I've talked to a few former cinema supporters who've been very disappointed um, with her. However, you know, I, I, I do, I do want to say, I mean, it's, you know, when you look at some of her accomplishments, you know, they, there's a lot that they can tout out there. So, you know, if you get beyond the, the Democrat base, you know, where is that? And the numbers don't really necessarily look great for her right now. They don't. When you look at the polls and we were discussing this earlier, it's interesting, the poll I saw showed cinema versus Gallego mm -hmm. versus Sheriff Lamb <laughs> as the the Republican candidate. I'm 
I, he certainly may end up as the Republican candidate, but that's mm-hmm. that's a really wide open. Well, it's it's amazing because we you know we were talking right before we started taping this segment. It's like you know you almost forget that Lamb is in the race, right? Which is not great no. because because you're everybody's still waiting for the big shoe to drop. Yes, and and, and it's, it's, everyone wants to know if Carrie Lake is going to get in the race. Yeah, and yeah. she presumably becomes the front runner. Then we don't know that, yeah. but that's that's the name you expect. One thing that's interesting, and we're that's, still waiting to see if if cinema gets in the race. That's as well. true. Officially, right? I mean, there are more and more signs. She's holding she's, fundraisers. She's holding fundraisers out there. But are these signs that she's getting in the race, or you know, are is this just an attempt to stay relevant? Right. Because I I still and I I you know talk about this with other folks. I I I think that they're not a hundred percent convinced on anything right now. I could be. This is wild speculation on my on my part, but I I, I think that they're they're they're, they're they just want to be in a position in case they do want to run in case the numbers change or something they're there, um, and I think that a lot of people read a lot into this fundraising thing. Right. It's like, well, she's obviously this is a strong indication that she's running. Well, maybe maybe not. I know it's not maybe a satisfactory not. answer for people who come to pods like this. Is like yeah, they want experts to right. tell me what's going to yes. happen. And sometimes she's a politician. Politicians raise money. Yeah, that's, yeah, and, that's yeah. what they do. And, and sometimes the best answer is just like you know I don't you you, yeah. you don't know. Yeah, you is know, it a sign? Could be a sign. Yeah, because you know a little behind the scenes here, it's not like the cinema folks, you know, are really tight with lo- with the local media here. I think no. from from the outside looking in, almost I feel like anymore with our senators. Probably tighter with the with the with the with the Beltway media yes. than a lot of folks here. Yes, so we don't get a lot of opportunities. I mean, you know, Kirsten Cinema, you are welcome to come on this pod. Absolutely, We'd anytime be happy you to want. Have you. We'll happy be to have happy you. to have you here. Yes, we'll keep the seat warm. We will keep the seat warm. We will we will adjust our schedules accordingly, anytime, any place. One of the things going back to that poll that I thought was really interesting is the poll numbers show Cinema polls more Republicans at this yeah. point than she does Democrats. Yeah, I'm not sure if you look at that if you're Cinema's camp and think that's a good sign or a bad sign. It doesn't really feel like a good sign when you've been a Democrat up until a yeah. year ago or whatever that was. Yeah, but I, I think the idea is though when she, she knew that a certain percentage of, of Republicans handed her that gave her that seat, and she was has been governing uh, to appease them. But I think you know in doing so, she forgot about her base support. And when she would do things like vote against minimum wage or she would do things like, you know, uh, you know, uh, defend the filibuster, I think this really upset people. Like, because, you know, Kirsten wants to have the discussion on the filibuster about this rule and how she wants to keep tradition. But the people, you know, like a lot of Democrats I talked to saw they see her holding up was voting rights legislation. Right. I think another issue she faces, too, is on some of the votes, at least one of the votes that seemed to be counter to her Mm -hmm. past views, she made a big visual point of it. The the minimum wage vote Mm -hmm. with that was the thumbs down on the curtsy, was it not? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. The curtsy, not curtsy. We've been told it's not a curtsy. It yes. The (laughs) (laughs) the possible curtsy with the thumbs down. The it's one thing to make the vote. It's another thing to make a gesture that's going to really aggravate a lot of people who voted for you. Yeah, whether thinking that that was something you would support, whether intentional or not. I mean, it just came off yes bad. It did for her, Um, and she's kind of having trying to have kind of a similar argument um, with this uh, military abortion issue in the Senate that she opposes where Tommy Tuberville is on abortion, but she supports the rule that allows him, and she called it a tool, that allows him to single-handedly hold up, you know, these these promotions in the military that is now being criticized as putting national security at risk. Yes. Um, two things. One, it, it would... It's hard. I know that her side is very defensive about the suggestion mm-hmm. that we're looking at a compromise on abortion. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to look at it. I don't know what else the compromise would be if she's talking mm-hmm. about a compromise. Mm-hmm. Second, if she could stop referring to him as coach. <laughs> he's a grown man with a name, and he's a senator, and I realize he loves to be called coach. And I realize that if you're the coach of Auburn, it's – 
in that part of the country, that's a much, much more important job than being the senator. <laughs> it, it, it is. From your neighboring state of Alabama, because he lives in Florida. Yeah. But uh, don't call him coach. <laughs> the, man, the man has a name. Call him Tommy. <laughs> call him Senator Tuberville. <laughs> He's not a coach anymore. He's not. He's he, not. He wasn't good enough to keep his job at Auburn. <laughs> no, he wasn't. I mean, I, look, you know, I'm just saying it's a high yeah. pressure job, the Auburn yeah. job. But uh, you know, that's that's. He decided for the more low pressure job of being United States yeah. senator. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and, and, and critics of cinema have, have pointed that out. Ruben pointed that out as well. Uh, you know, where do you compromise? Where's the compromise? You it's, should have access. Right. What is the middle ground there? And it's hard to see one. And, you know, and and Kirsten, to her, you know, her, she would say that, you know, what in 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 the sound that we we heard, the, the audio tape and the quotes from that, that that meeting, she made these comments at. She said, "There's always a solution. Sometimes you can't see it." And we're just two dudes in a podcast studio right now, um, talking about this. Let's, yes. let's be honest about it. Like maybe there is some solution. We're just not thinking outside the box. But you know, in, in issues like this with abortion, I mean, it's one side or the other. Yes, and if he's if he's going to hold to that position, I don't know where that I don't know where that solution is. I don't know where that compromise is. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, in in and again, in, in, when we start talking about the Senate race, it's going to be a massive. It's going to be a huge, huge race. Yes. Um, you know, the, the money that's going to be spent in Arizona on that race next year is just going to be insane. The money that's going to be spent in all 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 elections in, in Arizona next year is going to be you know insane how do you think like you know if and when carrie lake jumps into this how does this change the dynamic you think it certainly raises the profile significantly yeah. it's really hard to tell how popular she is in the state now because i know the polls showed the popularity dwindling a little bit dwindling yeah. yes yeah um and so i i really don't know i mean i it was interesting to see that that poll even when you split it three ways still had Ruben Gallego winning that, mm -hmm. um, and that's against Sheriff Lamb. If if the if the Republican candidate is Carrie Lake, <laughs> she's she has a higher profile than Mark Lamb. Certainly, mm -hmm. is she more popular at this point? I I don't know. Mm -hmm. I would think maybe, but it, but yeah, it 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 raises the temperature dramatically the second Carrie Lake gets involved. It raises the national profile. Yeah, it, 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 exactly. I think, and I just wonder how much longer um, Sheriff Lamb is going to stick in this race. Because again, it's just been so you almost forget that he's in the race at this yes. point. And you know, feel free to call me up and complain about what I just said about it. If the Lamb people are listening to this, they can complain. But like, like we don't know much about. He hasn't been been a non-factor, and his, his fundraising totals bear that out. Yeah, you know. So um, before we leave, I just want to ask uh, anybody, you know, if you have any advice. For our viewers out there, if they will be moving a kid into a dorm <laughs> into the near future. Yes. yes, get all the stuff you think you're going to want before your move-in <laughs> date. Because that move-in's beautiful. I mean, we pull up to the dorm, and they grab all the stuff out of the back of our SUV and load it into a cart, and we drive to the parking garage. And by the time we walk from the parking garage to his room, all of his stuff was stacked up there on his side. They assign you the side of the room. It's already stacked up. It was great. I wish all of the stuff was in the car when we pulled up so I wasn't stumbling like an idiot carrying a refrigerator across campus. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, no, it was great. It's a great system they have. All right, that's probably the most important thing that people yes. will remember from this this, this podcast. Is. Yes, <laughs> me stumbling like an idiot, yes. <laughs> all right, guys. All right, I'll have to call it a night from that one. Sounds Thanks good. a lot. Thanks. Thanks for listening. You can subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, the Google Store, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. See you next time.